Depends what's called crypto investing. And there's a new trading competition that's starting for this month. You can see, where is it at? Let's scroll through up here. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, right here, future trading competition, right? It's $10,000 in prizes to be given away. And all you got to do is log in there, right? You just tappy tap that, log in. But you want to use my link that's down below all my videos, right? If we go to YouTube and we go into my videos, you can see on any random video, we'll pause, we'll pause that. You can see my link right there. Just tap on that little tap tap action. Sign up for BitGit if you haven't uh, joined yet. This is for new and existing people. Use that link down below. And all you need is $100 in your account in order to enter the trading competition. And then you can trade the volatility in crypto, right? And uh, you can help support the channel. And while you're trying to support the channel, you can attempt to win your part of the $10,000 prize as this is a very volatile market. As you can see, something interesting is happening today. Uh, the dollar is down a half a point, a half basis point, which is big. You can see gold is responding to that. Gold's up about $100 an ounce from its bottom that it hit a couple weeks ago. Is it done going down? Mm, probably not. Could it still go down more? Yeah, probably. But it's been a nice recovery. But it's interesting that the dollar is declining and Bitcoin hasn't responded. Bitcoin's traded sideways and even falling today, right? I'm expecting a little bit of a move in Bitcoin based on the dollar. Uh, having such a down week again, I believe it was down last week in total. But you see, you can see gold's had a really nice response uh, since it had that bottom right there, because I believe gold will eventually start to take off. And you can see some of the stocks that I do own. And yes, they are down and they're down big. Even though I have not bought the top, I was starting to accumulate a few years ago uh, when these stocks, these gold stocks were down uh 30 to 60 percent from its all-time high uh and they've continued to consolidate they've had some big moves i've been up big money on them but i didn't want to sell because it's not my time to sell and i didn't think it would come down this far I, obviously in hindsight i would have sold some of those profits not all the position but i would have downsized and then re-upsized as the price came down but it's easier to see uh, what actually happened after the fact right but i continue to accumulate and you can see Pan America Silver, I do have uh, quite the holdings on that, right? I have quite a few shares of this. And you can see it's all-time high. We're just going to look at some of these all-time highs. You can see it was way up here, $43, $44. I did not buy anywhere near that. I started buying from its recent peak uh, when that was down 34%. And then I bought more down here when it was down 45%. Right. So I was 30 to 45 percent off the all time high when I started buying Pan America silver. Right. I own uh, 400 shares of Kinross and you can see. Wow. This one's goes back a long time. You can see Kinross's all time high was up about 12, 13. What was its all time high? Thirty dollars. Wow. We went up to thirty dollars. I didn't buy anywhere near there. So from its all time high in Kinross, I started buying my shares down here. It's in the five dollar range i believe so it's down about 80 percent from its all-time high right uh gpl is a they did a reverse split right i had ten thousand shares now i got one thousand change not happy about that uh but that's more of my speculation for two and a silver i own quite a few shares of this and i did not buy anywhere near the all-time high uh let's let's take this and thaw this out, you know, right? A Kinra or uh, Fortuna and a silver, you can see it's all time high was nine bucks on this chart. I started buying uh, this down here in the three dollar and thirty cent range. I think my average price is right about there, so it was down 65 percent from its high. But you can see with our industry exclusive measuring tool from about where I bought it at current price, we're down 17 18 percent. But I didn't buy the all-time highs. I'm buying it when they're down and accumulating, right? And then AEM, I own quite a few shares of this. I upped my position about two weeks ago as the price was coming down. And you can see AEM, uh, its all-time high was, wow, $87. I did not buy up there. 
And from the all-time high, I started buying, it was in the 40s. It was somewhere, somewhere up in the upper four. It was down about 40, 45% from its all-time high when I started buying. This is a little bit risky because this could be a mountain double top, right? And this could be a neckline. And if that is the case, you would do a targeted move from the top to the bottom the point of a breakout and that would be a catastrophic i would not like to see that uh that would bring the price down all the way to about ten dollars into this white support this white area the support zone down here in the supply zone right this is a major supply zone if you broke this area right there you got nothing to hold it up it would trade into here really quickly that would not be good for me because i got i think 25 shares of this right at 40 dollars a pop that's a uh, quite a bit of money but we're going to continue to accumulate because I do believe eventually the gold and silver price is going to start to take off. And as the gold and silver price starts to take off, the mining stocks accelerate to the upside. And uh, I hadn't buy any of these anywhere near, as I just showed you, anywhere between 30 and 40% from their all time, or 30 to 60% from their all time highs is when I bought. Uh, let's take a look at this. You can see my account has been getting hammered. Uh, you can see we got 30 shares of AEM. We have 500 shares of Fortuna Silver. Ken Ross, we have 400 shares. And then we have our Europac Gold Fund, which is just tracking the mining shares, right? It's a ETF. Oops. A Peter Shift Europac uh, ETF. And uh, it pays a decent dividend. But you can see in our portfolio, we've been getting slaughtered. You can see we were all the way up to. Uh, not too long ago, back in the great boom of April, we were all the way up to just under, just over 11 and a half, just $11.4,000, 11, bucks. our account got up to. And you can see we went on a moon ride from 60 something hundred. And in less than three or four weeks, we increased our portfolio uh, by the stocks appreciating by about five, six grand really quick. And now you can see we've had a big fall. We've got a lot of big ups and downs. You can see we had a big up here, then we crashed, right? Then we had a big up here, and then we crashed, and then we had a big up here, and then we crashed, right? So that's what's going on there. You can see it's just like a roller coaster. But we're slowly accumulating as the stocks come down every time. So every time they go back up, we, our price appreciates higher than what it was. But that's for another time in another place but you can see the bitcoin price is starting to come back down again right see this and i fear like we were talking about yesterday i was in a short should have cup it i put a stop loss on when i was at work because i didn't know if the price was going to skyrocket and didn't want to get liquidated made 15 percent but as i fear this might be where you come down to next in the old bitcoin price retesting some of these lower levels in this bear flag that we're in at $21,065 is my underneath support. If you want to get bullish, you got to break above this, hold it as support where it's straddling and then kick to the upside, right? So that's what we're watching out for there. Luna coming down like a house of bricks. Uh, you can see Ethereum is, I think, coming down to the 1269 level or that green ring on lower support. If you wanted to get bullish, what you would have to do is stay above this. 1688 upper resistance but it got topped out again by it and i have a feeling you might come back down here make another shot up like this and then trade to the downside in ethereum but you got to break above that critical area if you want to get bullish right a little cardano love you can see we're straddling on cardano and i fear with cardano if you break back below this your next move in cardano would be a swift and fast and hard fall down to 42 cents which from current price that's a nice 12 percent fall so we're going to watch out to see if Cardano does break back down into this trading area that it's been in for quite some time and come back and test that 42 cent lower support. And then XRP is doing the same thing. You can see it's forming this little mini, maybe inverse or head and shoulders, but we're getting topped out at that 37 cent level, just like we did right here. And then back there farther, if I zoomed out for you guys, you can see rejection. Uh, support, support, flush down through it, rejected, rejected, and now it looks to be our third rejection. And that's why we have that here from the other day. As I fear, 
We're going to trade back down into this 30 to 32 cent range. Like, subscribe, and share to Vincenzo's Gold Crypto Investing. Use my links down below. Join the trading competition and take your stab and your shot at trading this volatility and earn some of that uh, $10,000 in uh, cash, money, prizes. Peace and love. Peace and love.